A record $200 million are part of the ongoing capital expenditures being spread out by Uganda's three leading sugar industries to modernize their milling capacities. But even then, government is still concerned about production standards and capacity of the sugar industry to achieve a target of 700,000 metric tons over the next 15 years. There was no, there was no binding law. We, we, you can have very good policies, but if you can't have a law that enforces those policies, you have a problem. And that's the problem that we had in the past. It is on that basis that Cabinet has approved a new raft of principles that you hope will enhance regulation through a sugar authority as well as a sugar development board. It is the pricing which is making many, many growers of sugar cane become poorer. It's because right now the price is pegged only on the price of sugar. Whereas we know that out of, out of sugar cane we get more products. Dr. James Mutende, the state minister in charge of industry, says that with Uganda's vast potential in the sector, a national sugar institute is also being planned. As it is now, we are going to control the establishment of factories close to existing ones. We don't want to choke the existing industries. We would like you to go to other areas if you're interested in sugar, doing sugar, sugar growing. A host of mini sugar plants have over the past 10 years emerged in the eastern corridor such as GM Sugar, Mayuge, Kaliro, Seven Star, and Uganda Crop Industries, among others. First of all, the investors in the sugar, including the outgrowers of sugar cane and the processors, the millers of sugar, you should know that government is committed to making sure the industry is competitive and profitable nationwide. Reina Ogen, NTV Business.